Good morning, YouTube fans and friends. For those of you who know me, they know that I hate mornings. I am not a good morning person. So all that that just happened is a complete sham. We leave for vacation tomorrow. I've got a laundry list of things to do. I'm off work today, so we're going to start getting them done. Um, so uh, I'm not going to film a lot of it, but I'm going to work on my truck. I found some blown fuses uh, from the trailer, so I'm going to work on that. Um, but I'm going to start this morning by showing you some like cameras that we have, like security cameras. So they're WISE, uh, W-Y-Z-E -E cams. Uh, I really like them. I've been using them for a few years as soon as they come out because they're a $20 camera that does a really good job of like just motion detection and caption. Now they've got a lot of other products now and I've got several of them. They've got a door lock. I love it. I just ordered, what I just order? A thermostat. It's not supposed to be here until, well, they haven't put a date yet. I ordered a new doorbell. So they've got a complete line. They can continue to innovate and what they're really uh, into is just low price like economy you can afford it you, you they're twenty dollars a camera they're indoor cameras and I'm gonna talk about that in a minute but like you you can buy five of them for a hundred dollars plus shipping um, you, you can't get hardly any other uh, camera shot now I've used some others like um, the link cameras I think the Amazon they're great they, they are great but they are way more expensive so that's kind of the economy uh, to me. Um, none of them do, I think, a fantastic job at the, at the price range I'm willing to pay to like great get like facial recognition. But to just have a good picture of what's going around inside and outside the house, especially when we're gone, uh, that that's important to me. So I'm going to install one here this morning. I'm going to walk through it uh, and then on to our next chore. Um, also, I've got I've got Mallory with me today, Hi. so she's going to be helping. And we've got the grain truck warming up. So Dad said the other day, he goes, oh, I think it just lost air in the in the uh, high-low range, and there's no air there. So I've got it just sitting there idling to build up pressure and see maybe I've got the lever in high. Maybe it'll go back into high gear and we get that transmission. Uh, so maybe we can move it. Unlikely, but I'm working here around the house anyway, so we might as well just let that sit there and idle and build up air pressure and see what we can get. Um, other than that, let's, let's start looking at this camera. Hey guys, so I'm actually gonna go out here to the chickens. This is really cool. Um, Cause we just moved, it's kinda nice to come out here uh, and get the chickens out cause now they're ours. So I think that's really nice. Um, it's kind of a chilly morning. So my nose is kind of all stuffed up. But if you are quiet if we're quiet enough they might come out so I just grab this and we pull it down to here and then we clip it here and then there's a chicken hello so they're all coming out now as I said you just pull the rope down from there and hook it so and it lets it big enough so they can all come out. Well, it's not going focused. Oh, there's my chicken, Goldie. He's the one that just hopped off. So that's what we do in here. I'm going to check this seed real quick. Which they might need some, I don't know. But we leave the thing open every day because yeah i don't exactly know why but let's just check if i'm just gonna check they're really loud i'm just gonna check if they need food oh there's my chicken jimmy he's a big rooster he rooster he's really big i don't know why he's on the block i don't think they they don't need food that big cockadoodle do is my rooster jimmy it's him being loud he might come out later but I thought I'd just show you guys. So, yeah, he's not out yet. So, yeah. We're just gonna go back up to the, up to the, 
porch, give the camera back to my dad, then I gotta go inside and or go inside and either do my homework or help my dad out here with doing the waste camera. <laughs> okay. Bye. Get the chickens put up? Yeah. Good deal. Jimmy was sitting on the bar. So why I started with an indoor camera, uh, and that's what we're using here. They actually have an outdoor camera now. Um, but I found that I actually like these little indoor cameras, mostly because I have them already. Uh, we moved, I'm just reinstalling them. I, this isn't a new camera, but we're gonna have to resync it. A couple of things I don't really care about uh, on these is being able to change like your Wi-Fi network and stuff uh, without having to completely take it down and redo it. But um, it's just something we have to live with with indoor camera. Now they make an outdoor camera. I've seen it. I just haven't bought any, but we're going to put up this indoor camera and we're going to put it in outside. Um, what I do have for it, <coughs> I've developed a cough too and I'm flying tomorrow. So that's going to be exciting. Um, what I have bought for it, 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 I've bought a couple different ones, but I've been using this one on this camera is a kind of an outdoor housing. I think it's cute because it looks like a little bird house or a little dog house. Uh, it, it does a good enough job of protecting the camera from weather. Uh, the other thing that I generally have done that's helped is kept it underneath, underneath, kept it underneath the eave, uh, like right here. So it just doesn't take a lot of weather. Um, I've only had, so I've had these for two or three years now. I've only had one camera go bad, and that camera went bad uh, because it didn't have a good um, USB supply and it rusted so uh, it just had it, it it was exposed to a lot more weather and that USB rusted and it rusted in the power port now that is a negative to these indoor cameras uh, because they are uh, powered but I have an outlet right here and that's why I'm putting the camera right there the outdoor cameras they are a battery in a hub and I'll, I'll probably get some but I just wanted to put this up today just so we've got good visibility of the front of the house. I've got one on the back already. But I just wanted to get good visibility to the front of the house while we were gone. Uh, just for peace of mind more than anything. So I'm going to set this up. It, it just takes an app from your phone. You uh, scan a little uh, QR code and it walks you through the steps of everything you need to do to set it up. So I should have this uh, up and running here in just a minute. So we're going to try to get this set up here. Um, on the app, it's pretty easy. You just uh, push the plus sign, add device. This is a wise cam, so it's got a list of everything. It tells you what to do. Ready to connect. I heard ready to connect. And then it just goes through. So it just walks through like three steps. Like you, you set it up, it connects you find it um, and then you tell it what network like the password stuff and they've updated the app where you just it saves it just told me to set up complete this is a front driveway cam you can name it whatever you want and it's already asking me to upgrade but <laughs> so there you go um, just like that I mean what that take a minute and a half to set up a camera and so now really what's left is I'm gonna put the housing on and screw that up there and uh, we'll be good to go so not not terrible um, we kind of got a whole view of the front of the house and the driveway so that's good uh, it's up here I made my first mistake of the day already. Uh, measure twice, cut once. So the the original cord that come with it was too short by like five, six inches. Um, that was exciting. So so I had to use my 20 footer. So I, I'll just have to buy a 10 foot and get that re-ran. But to, to swap out like power cords, you just unplug and plug back in. You don't have to do anything special. So that's that's good. 
Um, yeah, so that chore is done. Now I'm gonna clean up that wire so it doesn't look ridiculous. Put the ladder up. Step two, um, you gotta run to town and get stuff for the truck and for the boat. I'm gonna see if that grain truck situation has changed at all and uh, just keep moving along chores here. Oh, I'm also gonna share, I got a sprayer that I wanted to spray some um, bug spray around the house. So we're gonna get that going as well. So let's continue on. So in continuation of getting things done today, um, I wanna get the cover, a winter cover on the boat. And to do that, I need to do two things. One, I like to run uh, like RV antifreeze through each one of the jet pumps. So this is a Yamaha, it's a jet boat. I've, I've blown the water out but I like to run I like to run um, RV antifreeze through it and it's it's pretty simple I just use like a little pond pump and I run that through they've got ports here um, to run it through so what we what we do is I use this little pond pump and I just pump it through uh, that pump now the most important thing that I've read from Yamaha is that the engine needs to be running while you're pumping um, that antifreeze through or any water. Start engine, uh, start water, stop water, stop engine. Uh, that's the general approach that you're supposed to take while um, you know winterizing or running water through, so you're not forcing water into the system you're just letting it uh, kind of pull into the system I use that pump just to get the water or the you know antifreeze to that inlet hose and I let the boat motor do the rest of the work now generally I like to take um, and pour this antifreeze into like a little bucket but I think today what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try something new probably cause a mess is I'm gonna I'm gonna cut the top of this off and see if I can't set that pump down in there I think it's a terrible idea already say about just cutting the top of that this off set the pump down in here because I'm gonna run it all the way through anyways I didn't get what I normally get but I got some pressed stone water line antifreeze let's see how it does it's a little more expensive i had gone to the auto parts store and they just didn't have what I was looking for so whatever we're just gonna make do with what we've got and this is what we're gonna do so I'm gonna start by getting this this up I'm gonna try to cut the top of this off and see if I can't get it going here so I went to the courthouse I got some paperwork that I needed to get, so that's all done. Um, the next thing, went to the auto parts store to get the stuff, change, finish change the oil, and then finish up the boat. But I wanted to show you like this thing that I'm doing. Uh, it's kind of questionable, but also kind of funny. So you guys will enjoy this. So normally when I winterize, what we do is we pump. This is a port here to pump uh, liquid water if you're trying to start your boat dry or not in the water or also be able to get antifreeze into it uh, but I didn't I normally use a bucket so I didn't want to use a bucket I just uh, decided that I would cut the top off of this and um, let's see how much of a mess this is gonna make someone is just I'm not running the motor yet what you have to do is run the motor and then turn this on but what I'd like to do is just uh, get some of this antifreeze into this line here uh, so it takes some of it out of the of this bucket it's like super busy day road day so super busy noise day okay well that didn't that didn't turn out too shabby This is what's going to be shady. Okay. So now I need Mallory. Do 
doing the right hand engine first. Stop you. I'll go get my other. We'll be right back. So, okay, so we're going to plug this in once this motor starts. Don't, I, I'll tell you when to plug it in. Well, now it looks like it's kind of pinky water. Okay. It was coming out more pink bubbles. Okay. Coming out with like pink bubbles. So we'll slide this down here. Ew, what is that? What's what? That's stuff. Antifreeze. Hydro what? Antifreeze. Oh, what is that? Uh, anti freeze me. It keeps the it keeps stuff from freezing up. Okay. Plug this. Uh, yeah, you can close it. I'm gonna I'm gonna get up here and turn that other engine on. Okay, and then I do with the same thing. Just on the side. Yep, we're just gonna Well here, this is already on, so all you gotta do is plug it in, okay? Okay. It's gonna be fun, people! Ew, 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 there's something throwing through it. Yeah, there's something in there. Yeah. Ew! Why did you just let that do that? The other thing we'll have to do is, I like to do is fog the engine engine with um, just some fogging oil. Yamaha makes some, but I don't have really a local Yamaha dealer, so we just use Stabil. And what that consists of is just taking the the air intake here. Let's see if I can get a good picture. That's the air intake. Um, that's the air intake right there. And uh, <clears throat> just spraying this fogging oil down in there.
while the while the motor is running. So let's see if we can get that motor running. I like to choke it out a couple of times. <laughs> book says to like the maintenance schedule says to pull the spark plugs and then I'm having a loss of words pull the spark plugs and shoot down in top of there um, I, I normally don't do that so I I, I found these TR ones from Yamaha have been great little motors uh, they start without any issue I love this boat um, I've not had any problems with this thing running I've followed this same process ever since I've owned it and it seems to be working great for me so let's see what we can we can get this other side too <laughs> normally just like that um, I'm done like I, this boats filthy dirty but it doesn't get put into like a super clean environment so what I like what unfortunately uh, we have to do is get the cover put on it and I keep it away from the farm because um, while we're running soybeans because just so much dust in the air I just don't like to get all that dust in and on it even though it's already filthy dirty I don't like to get all that dust in there in it so I kind of keep it away and then we'll move it over to a barn but it sits in a in a farm barn all winter long and it's just bound to get dust and dirt and and get a little dirty so I don't necessarily keep it sparkle spotless in the in the fall I'll try to get good and clean in the spring and use it from there um, that's really it I mean I think as far as winterizing I'm gonna take the batteries off the off the terminals and that's pretty much it we're gonna get the cover on so another chore done for today I uh, keep gonna keep on but uh, chugging through try to get this stuff all done before we leave for vacation I know some of the other people that follow me are from Texas, some from Florida. Here's the thing about Indiana weather. So it's like the middle of October and like this morning it was cold. Like I was wearing this long sleeve shirt because it was cold. It's like 40 degrees. That's like 75 degrees at noon and now I'm sweating to death. So. If you feel like you're wanting to move to the Midwest because you're missing out on something, uh, stink bugs or, you know, crazy fall shift weather or grain trucks driving by at 100 mile an hour, that was probably a dump truck. These are the things you have to keep in mind that it's going to be cold in the morning and hot in the afternoon and you're going to have no clue on how to dress every day. So I don't know if that means you have to get up every day with two outfits. I've never have. I've lived here my entire life I'm going on 38 years. I don't know how to dress for October. Uh, last year, the first of October is 95 degrees. Uh, this morning it was like 43, 44 degrees outside. Consistency. 
consistency. I've got the boat 90% there. The last thing I'm going to do is put uh, the cover on. So I have to, it takes two hands and a lot of jumping and moving and manipulating. But uh, I'm going to get that put on. Then we'll have that job for this entire year finished up. Kind of a sad day to have to put the boat up. Uh, didn't need to use it very much this year. I don't think I have any video at all. But uh, it just means that winter is coming. And the cold's going to be here. And, and we're going to have snow to move sooner than later. Even though I'm sweating to death right now. <coughs> oh. I'm pretty sure it's from like working in that grain bin and breathing all that moldy corn. I don't have a fever. It's just that cough. I don't even feel bad. I don't even sound bad. I mean, I think I sound pretty good. I'm one of these guys that, uh, like old school, I guess, best way to put it. I still think for some reason I should change my own oil because it saves me it saves me money. I, I've never actually quoted in this truck. It's a diesel. That thing holds I think it's like 11 or 13 quarts of oil. And I think it and it's a synthetic. And I think it's like 80 bucks. I spent $170 today at AutoZone, but it's like 80 bucks to change the oil on this car. I just wonder if I'd call the dealership. I'm guessing. I just assume it'd be more. I don't take, you know, you can't take your time into that account, but I assume it'd be more. But after thinking about it, I bet you it's probably like like 75 bucks to have the dealership change the oil on that thing I should probably call and find out we're getting close to harvest uh, that's why there's just so much going on like why it's such a a mess of things we're just not super organized, although we're getting closer to being ready to go. Um, the biggest thing, like some of the biggest things right now are just getting all the fall stuff ready too. Uh, this is one of our wagons. You know, it's things that we hadn't checked yet, though this wagon was used. You can see like, maybe not a great angle there. You can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that very well, but the <clears throat> they need some air in them because it's full of corn. This came off of another, another field, one, not one of ours, but off another field. Really clean and it's getting dry. Uh, there's probably 275 to 300 bushel. It's drier. It's drying down. There's probably still like 19, 20%. But things like that, you don't have a flat tire. Especially on a wagon that's full of corn. That's a bad deal. Um, I'll try to pull my truck in here, find something to lay on, and get this oil changed. <coughs> found it <laughs> I'm gonna start paying to have my oil changed I don't know who I'm kidding they probably even like sweep out the floorboards and stuff for you when you do it you pay 75 80 bucks for an oil change okay let's get this in here and uh, get it emptied out so one thing that happened many moons ago on uh that i did on changing oil was um i 
I added, I like installed a, a valve onto my oil uh, drain plug because, like I said a minute ago, that thing holds like 13 quarts of oil. And so when you open the plug, uh, it was inevitable in these trucks to get oil everywhere. It sucked. I mean everywhere, everywhere. Not a little everywhere, I mean everywhere. So, um, <clears throat> I found these, I'm trying to get under here to show you. I found this fitting on the interwebs that, uh, I think it's a easy oil valve or whatever. It's been a fantastic little purchase. That valve right there. And all we have to do is turn stuff. Let's turn that right there. And it'll start draining. So that's been a pretty fantastic little invention. An installation onto this for training oil because then the oil just goes straight down as opposed to you know shooting out and getting all over the place it's just a mess we're trying to record while i'm doing this is also just a mess i'm gonna i'm gonna put you guys on hold until i can get this filter off and <clears throat> get uh get this drained out okay so i got that job done truck's running now i didn't even say why did you worry about where you got your truck getting oil change dad's taking it to get, get his boat from the lake so he needs to borrow my truck i wanted to put oil in it need a new fuel filter i didn't have the fuel filter in right so the truck wouldn't start it's very annoying i smell and covered in diesel fuel i'm not going to remember this in like four months from now or five months from now when i go to get this oil change again i do it myself but next time it will just be an oil change it won't be a fuel filter change but it's going to be like I should just take this to the dealership. Remind me, if you remember, remind me. So I'm gonna get back over to the house and try to get him so he can get going. Well, I can't begin to tell you, like I was in a hurry to try to get out of there, but I can't begin to tell you like how terrible it was to finish up that job. Uh, change out that fuel filter i didn't have the housing tight enough like by a whole spin <clears throat> that's important because it was like sucking air and if it's got a air leak that stinking thing um that air or that that fuel pump will not push air out or uh, fuel out so that sucked Anyhow, I'm uh, I'm done for the day. I gotta put the chickens up. I gotta run an air compressor over to the blisters, his air compressor, and rearrange some cars here and get ready to go to vacation in the morning. So we'll take some video from that. I don't know if we'll post much, but I'll definitely have some. Um, I know not a lot of farming going on today, but it, that's just part of it just always something to do this is why we're busy this is why i'm busy that's why i don't get a lot of stuff done because there's just like a million chores but i tackled everything on my to-do list is done um with the exception of spraying bug spray and it's still kind of daylight so i might get in a, a hurry and get that done thanks guys for watching um staying with us give us a thumbs up show us that you care and hit that subscribe button I appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. Thanks.